with a little bit of delay, which is my fault because I I took my pleasure to to uh, talk to Adam before before the seminar. So we are starting the weekly colloquium. Today our guest is uh, Adam Bernos from University of uh, Warsaw. Um, Adam did his uh, PhD in condensed matter at the University of Warsaw. Then he worked at several places, including uh, Konstanz, right, yes. in, in Germany. Uh, and some time ago, uh, Adam changed changed the subject from uh, strictly condensed matter statistical physics uh, physics to uh, foundations of quantum mechanics. Yeah. It was quite uh, your your. Uh, uh, questioning of the Bell experiments were quite famous some some years ago. Yes. And, and today we will have a um, lecture on uh, relativistic quantum measurement. So as far as I understand, some new and fresh take on the old and uh, in a sense painful subject in the foundation. Yes. Quantum mechanics. So Adam, please the ground is yours. Okay, hello everybody. So uh, the title of my talk is uh, about uh, measurement. Three words that uh, are very uh, difficult to uh, merge. Uh, so uh, relativity, quantumness, and measurement. Uh, they are all three different. So if we talk about measurement, measurement could be tactical. Uh, we don't need quantum mechanics. Uh, it's not uh, also already uh, pre-quantum era uh, to define in some, at least, uh, in case it's uh, um, uh, indirect uh, way, classical measurement, quantum mechanics with its own first postulate and so on, and relativity, another field uh, that uh, uh, makes some assumption about space and time. Okay, so let me start from the old but gold uh, theory of, of quantum measure. Projection postulate, something that everybody learns at um, studies at some stage. Uh, um, so, uh, how does it work? We have quantum mechanics, which uh, um, starts from uh, some quantum states, uh, which can be the density matrices, permission and the positive and so on, and uh, normalized. Uh, the state can be pure, so uh, a wave function. Um, but, uh, of course, what is missing here is the whole theory of dynamics, so uh, uh, Hamiltonian uh, mean pair transformation. That's a different story. So let's focus on uh, a measure. So uh, von Neumann defined it in a mathematical way in a book. Uh, the book is from uh, 1942, but I think most of you know uh, the later translation because it was in German uh, from 50s, mm, but it's the same subject. Uh, formulation of uh, quantum mechanics, including uh, measurement. So the measurement uh, postulate, the projection postulate, is based on um, on uh, on a projection operator, uh, which must be again a permission, and it can have the full family of projections. So it must be uh, um, uh, in some sense complementary, commuting. Uh, so we. Uh, um, we divide all possible outcome of a measurement, like in the in, in classical measurement, to subsets, and in, in each subset we have some projection. So, so uh, we have some set of outcomes here, for example, the outcome i, and the projection e i uh, uh, defines the probability to measure the outcome i. So we can have, uh, i can be 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, whatever. The sum of all uh, projection must be 1 or operator 1, because, of course, uh, the full measurement must be always yes. So, so uh, the probability must sum up to 1. Uh, and this trace uh, is the, this uh, mathematical formulation of uh, probability of the measurement of particular outcome. If we simplify this theory to uh, a picture with uh, one dimensional projection, which is projection on a special state, and take the pure state, when we take, uh, when we get uh, even older uh, rule, born rule, which is older than von Neumann measurement, uh, you maybe know that uh, born in his paper, 
uh, wrote this rule without this uh, uh, power two. It's only in the footnote that he wrote, oh, it must be square. <laughs> so uh, only later it has been uh, formulated in a more rigid uh, mathematical uh, way. Uh, uh, what is also important is what happens after the measurement. So uh, after the measurement, uh, we have some new state. The new state uh, is uh, obtained by uh, something which is also called collapse. So uh, the projection uh, means that, okay, now we have this outcome I, but also the state is changed. So we have a new state which depends on this outcome. So it's conditional state. And if we have this state, then the new state is projected by these uh, um, you know, from from two sides. And uh, if we um, if we take the simple uh, one dimensional projection, then the state is essentially this projection. So this is what again uh, everybody learns in quantum mechanics in, in studies uh, that the, the projection means that the new state is exactly this. Uh, mm, uh, projection, projective uh, state. Okay, so uh, is it that easy? No, not, not necessarily. There, is, uh, uh, there are some problems. So uh, projection is not the best uh, option to uh, for, for the, define the, the measurement. First of all, it's instant. So suddenly something changes in the system. It's uh, non-local. It's it's maybe not directly non-local because uh, nobody says said uh, what does it mean local. So far, we have we need to define some space time and, and so on. So it's just an operator in some abstract space. But uh, it's dangerous if we start thinking about space. Then uh, the question is: Okay, so where does this uh, projection take place? Okay. Uh, Another problem, there is no Hamiltonian uh, here, so there is no dynamics. Uh, uh, projection is something which uh, is a non-unitary um, uh, operator. It's not, 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 not a unitary operator, so it is not any dynamics, and it cannot be, because if we have only Hermitian uh, unitary dynamics, then uh, no measurement, there's no measurement at all. Um, Okay, so uh, that's um, uh, that's another problem. Uh, again, uh, another problem is uh, the problem with uh, commutation between uh, projections. So uh, we, we we can have one family of projections, for example, say uh, measuring positions or uh, bind into some say intervals of positions. If you if you have uh, if you want them to be discrete. And we can have a measurement of uh, momentum. And you all know that momentum and position do not commute, so, and so do uh, um, pro projection operators. So uh, we can have a family of projections measuring uh, position. We can have a family measuring uh, momentum, but we cannot have a joint family of projections measuring momentum and position. That's the problem. Uh, and you all know that uh, this leads to Heisenberg uncertainty relation. Another problem, uh, how to realize projection. So, okay, let's go to, la uh, to a laboratory and uh, ask, okay, so now I want to make a projective measure. And some of you may know that I make a lot of projections because I also uh, use, for example, uh, IBM quantum computer. So I probably made a millions of uh, billions of uh, projections and uh, you say okay well, okay so you you should know how how is it made so projection is a kind of approximation if we go to laboratory for example uh, uh, qubits and whatever the projection is not a, a direct say sudden projection it it goes like that that we uh, take some quantum states illuminate it with some radiation ask uh, about uh, how many photons or phonons or whatever uh, have been scattered from the state. And only after some time, we can say uh, that, that it's a uh, really real projection. And also I, what I 
and say that projection uh, this projection is not in stuff. If you if you uh, take as I said IBM quantum, this projection is not in stuff. It takes about uh, I don't remember exactly microseconds or whatever. So it's not in stuff. Uh, okay, but anyway, a projection is very popular. Uh, for example, it's popular in particle detection detectors, uh, but only in a very simplified way. So, uh, uh, you know, but physics, quantum physics is divided into several branches. There is condensed matter physics, uh, there is quantum optics, there is particle physics. Each one uses uh, quantum mechanics in a slightly different way. Although it's always the same quantum mechanics, but uh, in particle physics, they uh, usually have a, a certain um, type of experiments, which are mostly scattering or decay. So we uh, produce, for example, two beams uh, with very high energy. We uh, they collide, and we uh, ask about uh, uh, final state after the scattering. So in such a, uh, a case, there is no worry about instant changes, non-locality of and whatever, because the measurement does not need any reasonable uh, time resolution. If you uh, think about energy's case in particle physics, they are so large that the measurements case uh, in time and space are so small that uh, this large uh, circle in CERN uh, is so large that its uh, is case uh, larger, and even detectors, detectors are small, but they are much larger than all scales of quantum processes that take place in uh, in uh, in particle physics. So that's why this uh, projective uh, projective uh, uh, picture is good for very simple but. Mm, product, uh, but also useful experiments uh, with scattering, with decays, but uh, it uh, misses this uh, time result uh, measurement. Okay, so uh, is there a solution or some um, upgrade of uh, a projection uh, picture? There is. Uh, this is POVM, a positive operator value measure. Uh, I, I had a problem to find out who was the founding father of uh, POVM. Uh, I wrote here that it was Krauss in the 80s, but I know that uh, even before uh, Krauss, there were some ideas closely related to POVM. It was um, uh, uh, Holevo, it was Troy uh, Jamiokowski. Uh, so I think there would be more founding fathers than, than just Krauss. But I think Klaus is the most influential because uh, what we, how do we construct this POVM? We take a set of operators which now are all arbitrary, so they, they are not or not necessarily projections. They have to uh, be normalized by by the Hermitian square to one, and the probability uh, is uh, just like we, uh, in projection, but uh, uh, this E operator effect. Is no longer a projection, but still, if we sum up this to one, so uh, it, it can be uh, it's a mathematically correct definition of uh, probability or construction of our, because it's still some postulate construction of probability. So it's positive, it's uh, uh, it's normalized, and the state after the measurement looks very similar to um, what happened in projection, just uh, we replace uh, projections by Krauss operators. Uh, usually it's uh, not <clears throat> a pure state, it's a, a mixed state, so it's not a, a, a sing single state, but the picture is um, a, a somewhat related to, to what, uh, what projective uh, picture uh, gave us. Okay. So that solution, I wrote part of it because there will be a later story. Uh, okay, so uh, what are good sides of this new picture? Uh, there is, uh, it's flexible. So uh, Krauss operators can be almost arbitrary. And one very important thing is that they can be continuous. 
with projection, it's slightly difficult to, to uh, have, for example, a projection on a single point on a real line. So to define a projection on a single point in uh, in position, that's hard. But if you if you make Krauss operator, you can do it because you can uh, somehow smear out the position, get some uh, 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 some uncertainty, whatever. So uh, we can have the this, uh, this set of uh, uh, of, um, of uh, outcomes as a continuous. So so probability can be a probability density and so on. Uh, it can be also time resolved, which is very important because uh, based on Krauss operators, we can, for example, uh, define a measurement which is continuous in time. Uh, uh, such a measurement leads to Lindblad equation. Uh, we can observe quantum Zeno effect, so a freezing of dynamics uh, due to constant measurement, which can now be uh, continuous in time. So we we can uh, the good side is that we can describe more uh, phenomena than just a single measure. We, we can follow with uh, with time resolution and and uh, have. Uh, so there are plenty more options to, to apply. <clears throat> also, for all those who like the old projection, there is a good news. Uh, <clears throat> if you really like projection, then you always can do a, a kind of enlarging to a Hilbert space. And by Neymar theorem, you can show that uh, every P of M is equivalent to a projection in a larger space. So don't worry if you still believe in projection, you are correct, but just uh, see this link between these two pictures. So, so we, we, we can, uh, 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 so, so it's in some sense, it's not completely, uh, it's not uh, in, uh, contradictory to projection uh, picture. Okay, uh, first is some problems. Okay, so Krauss uh, uh, operators or POVM, do not solve the problem of non-commuting uh, um, sets of uh, uh, non-commuting measurements. The same problem that happened in projections, so non-commuting projections, uh, uncertainty relation, that's still uh, a problem here because if we we can have uh, two families, even just measuring uh, position and momentum, for example there is no joint uh, Krauss operator or family that, that measures one and the second. And, and uh, some of the marginals would be K and A, uh, K and KB. Uh, so, so it's not always possible. So I would say ra rather, uh, usually it's not possible. Another problem is it's still arbitrary. Like in projection, we can have different families of projections, Krauss operators, also do not give you a um, preferred family. So which Krauss operator family is better, it's up to you. So we, we can uh, simply disagree on that. Uh, another problem, it's harder. Yeah? So if you, uh, uh, that's why it's not uh, um, taught in quantum mechanics studies uh, at, at, uh, at first. So. Students start from projections, not from Krauss operators, because uh, working with Krauss operators is a bit more difficult than with projections. It's not that it, you cannot do uh, calculate anything. On the contrary, I can show you that, that I can calculate many things, but I will. That, this talk is not to show you uh, hundreds of, of uh, formulas, just to uh, convince you that, that it's possible. So. Uh, it's just a bit hard. Yeah? So, so th this this um, problem is uh, not so uh, uh, not so hard, but but it is. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> are there any? Uh, uh, so now, what about re relativity? Because we talked about the title of the talk is relativistic quantum measurement. So we have to say something about uh, locality, uh, relativity, and uh, where is the problem? Uh, the problem is, uh, Jarek also told us that I'm a great fan of Bell tests. Yes, I am. Uh, and uh, the Bell test is also quite old. Uh, um, a test if, uh, uh, no, look, I will not talk about the Bell test itself, but rather about assumptions of the, um, uh, um, 
uh, of the um, uh, of the test. So you have two observers, for example, Ace and Bob, and they have they make some measurements. But the rule of this game, of this non-locality test, is that they um, uh, set the detectors um, or measurements uh, uh, at some stage, uh, and the catch is that these uh, um, the settings are usually are uh, non-commuting. So we they have to either, for example, measure momentum or position or in, in, it's, it's rather done on spins or whatever, but uh, two level system. But in any case, the catch is that uh, this, these sets of, of uh, measurements have to be non common But they can do it freely. So at some stage here in the past, Alice and Bob uh, decide what to measure. And once they decide, they cannot change their decision. Uh, so we, we have to assume that here there's some decision part. And now they start to measure the state. The state is an in entangled in state, so uh, as and Bob measure uh, the state which is shared between them. They are space-like separated, so any uh, any uh, signal, light signal, cannot uh, travel between them. And now they, once they started the, um, the measurement, they have to complete it. So the measurement must be stopped before the information uh, from the other observer, for example, here from Bob, uh, reaches uh, the former one. Okay. So it's, it's, it's better explained here. So the choice of, the, of one of uh, observers uh, mm, is, uh, uh, creates some light cone, or here just a part of this light cone, but the other party must uh, uh, must must complete the measurement before the, the light will reach this region. Okay, so uh, uh, so the measurement must be outside this light cone. Yeah. So that that's a very important assumption of this uh, of this test. And for many near, uh, years, uh, uh, even Bell did not realize that it's so important. Uh, okay. So now we're, we're where uh, you we probably know that. Uh, Several years ago, uh, uh, there were experiments, uh, aspect, and Tyling got the Nobel Prize. So we all, I will not uh, repeat this old story, but they, uh, this is what they uh, got this Nobel Prize because they uh, succeeded in doing that. Yeah, so so the, uh, doing the bad test with this strict conditions uh, met. Okay. Uh, is it uh, is it now okay? Are we okay with uh, these recent bell tests? Well, uh, there are uh, people, including me, that uh, have still some objections. Yes. Uh, of course, I, I have no objections to to Nobel Prize to Aspect and Tellinger. That's really great work. Yes, don't worry. But I still think that the game is not uh, uh, yet closed. Uh, there are loopholes, so the problems, uh, which let me call them philosophical, because uh, uh, they cannot be closed by any experiment. They have to be closed by our belief in uh, uh, what happens. So one which is probably uh, known, well known, is the uh, superdeterminism or uh, lack of freedom of choice uh, uh, loophole. If we go, let me go back for a moment to this picture. If we are not sure that Alice uh, made uh, her decision about what to measure here, but maybe it was far earlier, then uh, we have uh, nothing to, to, to test because everything is predetermined. And if everything is predetermined, our life is predetermined, we have no influence on our life, we cannot change anything, then, okay, then, then a bell test uh, tells you completely now. So that's one problem. The other problem is, okay, less known, uh, but uh, people like Jarek uh, know that there is something like uh, objectiveness, that uh, we have to know that the measurement has been completed, that it's finished. 
And when do we know that the measurement is finished? When uh, the, we, we have several options. The experiment is finished when uh, the computer registers the click. Yeah, okay, so that's one. Uh, another one when is that it, it's finished when the experimenter reads the data from the computer. Okay. And the last option is it's not then, it's when uh, readers read out this PRI when it was published. Yes. So, okay, so we can end this measurement whenever, whenever we, we, we want. Uh, you may know uh, the paradox, which is called Wigner's friend. Before Wigner's friend, let me talk about Schrodinger's cat. Schrodinger's cat, Schrodinger's cat is a cat which is uh, uh, in a superposition of being alive and dead, okay? And now you come and when you observe when the cat suddenly must become dead or alive, okay? But now Wigner uh, made a um, uh, more complicated picture of this experiment, but uh, okay, uh, uh, Wigner stands outside the laboratory and does not enter this uh, room where, where is the cat and the, the observer. And now the observer observes uh, the, the cat, which is alive or not, but uh, Wigner standing outside the laboratory uh, does not know what happens in the laboratory. So only when Wigner enters the laboratory and sees his friend and sees the cat, then everything collapses and we know that the measurement is complete. Yeah. Of course, it's a kind of paradox, but it shows that it's really important to say, okay, at that time, the, the measurement is finished. Yes. Pardon, just, uh, just a little remark. I think that was... Uh, uh... Deutsch, who added a little bit more to this paradox, namely the friend has the freedom to uh, put on a flag, put on the light. I completed the measurement. Mm -hmm. So Wigner outside sees that the friend even the friend indicates I completed the measurement. But of course, mm -hmm. for for uh, for the outside observer, for proverbial Wigner. This is all intended, but you can you can yes. add a little twist to that, and you can, mm -hmm. you, yeah. can you can allow the thread to, to <laughs> communicate to put on the flag. I finished the measure. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so that, that's important, and that is uh, also why why I came to this object objectiveness that we have to uh, uh, keep some kind of uh, criterion that the measurement uh, is ended. Yeah. So uh, going back to, to Jarek, uh, uh, I like this idea that uh, when is the measurement uh, uh, finished? When everybody sees the same. Uh, so if, if uh, it's, uh, why I know that something is true? Uh, it's not true that I, I'm convinced, but uh, uh, all, all the audience is convinced or all the nation is convinced, then it's valid, yes? Yeah? So, so, uh, uh, in, by majority, for, for example. So, so there are many people who say, okay, that happened. Uh, okay, but um, the last part is probably the most con controversial. Okay, we can discuss, okay, aha, so maybe relativity is wrong. Maybe relativity is wrong. Okay, I, I know relativity is a kind of religion. Everybody believes it. <laughs> okay, but maybe it's wrong. Uh, okay, so what happens? This line here, maybe here is the problem. Maybe there's no uh, speed of light, uh, which is uh, the maximal communication uh, uh, speed. Okay, so let's dig up. Okay, so can we somehow prove? No, we cannot. That's an axiom, a very old axiom, but it's an axiom. You cannot derive uh, speed of light as uh, that is a communication limit. You can do it, uh, I think, in free theories, but not in uh, in full quantum field theory. You can try to derive it, but only perturbatively. But that's an axiom. So we have to remember that all these free things uh, need some kind of belief. So, yeah, free now of choice needs a belief. Uh, mm, Objectiveness needs a belief, and speed of light also needs a kind of belief. That's why they are a bit like uh, philosophical. Okay, uh, so can we uh, define a measurement 
uh, within relativistic theory because we want to talk about the measurement which is compliant with relativity uh, because we want to uh, say, put this all bell test for example in um, full um, relativistic framework but this old-fashioned uh, projection theory is insufficient because it's not uh, time result and so on but we, you know that we need we need some time resolution we need to, to know when, when the measurement has uh, started, when, when it has been finished. <clears throat> and do we have some models of relativistic measure? We do. There is an, another old model due to Onu and David. Uh, but uh, let's take a an, an fictitious particle which travels along a world line. The world line is uh, predetermined, so we know in advance when, where this particle uh, goes. And this particle goes and collects information about, for example, a field as it travels through the space time. Uh, it's usually a very simple uh, two level system. Uh, this is some Pauli matrix of the system. This is uh, the field which is measured in Heisenberg picture. And uh, it, it's just added to, to Hamiltonian, and uh, we can uh, collect information about the field by this simple model. It's covariant because the field can be um, undergoes any uh, Lorentz transformation and so on, so it's good. Uh, it can uh, explain uh, some uh, things. So uh, also you may know the UNRU effect. UNRU effect where uh, you can uh, say that um, if the observer travels with some acceleration, then it does not see the vacuum at zero temperature, but it sees that it has a finite temperature. Uh, okay, so that's the success of this model, that it can explain such things uh, uh, at finite temperature, black holes, black hole temperature, which is the same uh, here. Um, uh, so that, that, these are the good signs. But still, uh, that's not all the story. Uh, if you try to calculate anything from this model, when you run beyond a simple average, because if you just want to take the average field, you said black hole, black body, black uh, black body, yes, yeah, black body average. Okay, um, uh, but black holes too, because uh, black holes, uh, the temperature of black holes can be can be uh, also uh, calculated. If I remember from this acceleration. Okay, but anyway, I want to, rather to to focus on the problems uh, with uh, Unru David divergences. Uh, since it's a point particle, then uh, any um, quantum fluctuations are point-like. So usually we will have some problems with renormalizations. Uh, I tried to find if anybody uh, has uh, calculated something beyond a simple average. And whenever I found anything, oh, there are problems, there is some noise to be subtracted, whatever. So it's not so easy, and I would say it's rather impossible to get any useful uh, uh, um, uh, application, for example, to bell test by Uno David. Another problem is, okay, uh, why do we need an, an extra particle? Fictitious, okay, particle physics should already have all particles. Now we have another particle, so it's, self-contradictory. Yeah? So particle physics has already all particles, but now we have another one. Yeah? So it's not something that sounds good. Uh, the last uh, objection is maybe not so strong, but uh, just to, uh, according to the um, uh, progress in physics, it was invented in the 70s, and you know that cloud operators are from 80s. So it's before cloud operators, I would say that if uh, Unruh invented his uh, model after Klaus, he probably invented something a bit different. Yes, please. Uh, just to make it clear, I'm not very much, uh, I haven't read the Unruh papers. Is it assumed that at some point there's an additional measurement of the particle itself and its energy levels? Uh, 
Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, that's another problem. Okay, but at some stage, indeed, yeah, you're right. But at some stage, I need to measure the particle itself. It's like with, with big nerve friends. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, so uh, uh, there are several problems. I have not uh, uh, tracked all of them, but. Uh, um, uh, okay, uh, this this just exists as a model, but uh, the criticism uh, there, there is a lot of criticism. Uh, okay, and something uh, which which uh, I want to say that okay, so okay, so what is a particle if we have problems with detection? So Marlon Scully once wrote uh, in a paper, but okay, so a particle is what a particle detector detects. So uh, you you may know the Polish sentence "koniak uh, jest każdy widzi." What is a horse? Everybody sees. What is a particle? Detector knows. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, we don't know if we have a particle before the detector sees it. So I would say that the notion of particle can be transferred to the detector. Uh, again, in particle physics, you have wave uh, particle duality. So the part of the particle can be either a wave or uh, a particle. And it depends on the way you measure it. So it's either this force or something else. Yes, it depends on how do you measure it. Uh, and the particle detector should detect it as a particle, not as a wave. So here we come to the some uh, proposal how to solve it, how to define a measurement, which is the, the main um, uh, uh, the main aim goal of, of of my talk. How should we define the, define the the measurement model, which takes a particle as a particle? Okay, so now uh, a few uh, dangerous formulas, but don't worry, there are not, not many formulas in, in my talk. Uh, some theory which is helpful to understand uh, later calculation. If we want to talk about relativistic quantum field theory, it's very, there is a very useful picture in uh, Lagrangian path integrals, which helps in any calculations. If you have any average, when you take the field, when you take the path integral, when you take Lagrangian, you have some quantity which you can be measured. It can be not a single one, it can be a product of all quantities, whatever, but they depend on some fields. And now uh, the problem is okay, this integral. So, integral over what? Over space time? Almost yes, but with one uh, catch point that uh, if you integrate over time, uh, uh, and you want to have some uh, initial state, which is either the vacuum, which has zero temperature, or some another thermal state, you have to draw, uh, draw this funny uh, closed time curve when the time is formally uh, complex. It starts from some uh, mm, imaginary uh, part, uh, it goes down, then it goes along a real axis. At some stage, it goes back, it goes down again, and it stops at a point which is uh, different from the initial point by the inverse temperature uh, in imaginary direction. If we uh, take a real vacuum, which is zero temperature, then all these points, these two points uh, go to plus and minus infinity, so we have something like that. That's important because otherwise just going back uh, does not give you information about which is the initial step. Uh, once you realize that it goes like that, all calculations are maybe not completely easy, but they are much easier if you if you understand that this is uh, uh, the speech. Okay, now uh, in the solution, my solution if you want, to this measurement problem, relativistic quantum measure. First attempt, there will be several attempts. 
So uh, one attempt is okay. Let's define every this Klaus operation, Klaus operator, which is a Gaussian function. It's a Gaussian. Here we have some uh, outcome which can be continuous. I said already that that uh, uh, that uh, um, uh, Klaus operators can have a continuous outcome, and you have this square here, so it's a quadratic expression. You have some additional function which controls the the uh, the, uh, the area where the measurement is uh, takes place so in space and time we measure a field yeah? so phi is some field it can be a simple time ball on the field uh, of course uh, measuring just vacuum is very boring so let's add some incoming wave so we, uh, it's a very simple picture. We have some radiation, cosmic radiation, or whatever, which goes from infinity, and we just want to measure it as particles, a flux of particles. Um, okay, so uh, if we try to uh, apply some uh, to calculate, to make calculations, so okay, so now what is the average? We can do average. We can uh, we can uh, find probability. We can find. Uh, average, uh, mom higher moment, and so on. We are almost happy, except one thing, that if we take a simple free field Lagrangian, then it's quasi-classical. Why? Because everything is quadratic here. Everything is quadratic, and if you have uh, quadratic dynamics, quadratic measurements, it's classical. Why is it classical? Because, okay, there is some age probably uh, hidden, but uh, no, uh, no, no locality, no kind of paradoxes, whatever. Don't worry, there is uh, no problem. So, uh, uh, okay, so we have a wave picture, but we wanted the horse, we wanted the particle. So it's not correct. Okay. So that was an attempt, uh, but a better attempt is, is necessary. So, a better attempt. <laughs> Aha. So, let's add a square here. Some nonlinearity. If we take a nonlinear uh, Klaus operator, so nonlinear, uh, I mean, here in, in this function, okay, then maybe, okay, and now I see what I, for, I, I have forgot. I forgot a minus here, of course, sorry, okay, because otherwise it, is, uh, it would be uh, uh, divergent. So it should be with minus. Here. Um, in, okay, so let's take this nonlinear um, uh, field. Uh, and if we take nonlinear uh, um, Klaus operators, then after some calculations, which I don't want to show you because they are quite awful, uh, but you can find something which really resembles, uh, um, uh, resembles uh, uh, a particle. What does it mean, a particle, in terms of measurement? It must click. It must be zero or one. There is a particle or there is no particle. Yes or no. Not, not like a wave, which is continuous. It must be uh, dichotomic. And if it is dichotomic, then all averages must be, uh, so all moments must be equal to the first moment. OK. Uh, we need some additional uh, things like uh, that this function f has to uh, change very slowly. So uh, it cannot uh, be very sharp to, to be renormalized re and so on. But that's something we can live with. OK, um, <clears throat> almost OK. Uh, there are some problems. Uh, there is renormalization because there is phi square by point divergence. It's can um, subtract no problem, but there is some noise. If we take a noise of uh, phi squared, then the noise is phi to the power four. And unfortunately, this noise adds something. So I'm a bit cheating here. It's not completely true because there is a large noise that ha has to be added, some Gaussian noise, uh, mm, uh, which is much larger than uh, this first moment so we uh, it's something like that you have zero and one plus a large noise so it's still not zero and one yes because if you add a large noise to zero and one then then it's not like photon so we don't see this particle why uh 
So the problem can be uh, quickly found out, but uh, there is a problem with uh, this um, a quantity, which is just a simple square. And the simple square is something which is not conserved. <clears throat> it is not conserved, so it changes uh, during the dynamics. And <clears throat> this is why uh, there are fluctuations, because it's fluctuating. Uh, so there is a solution. Let's take something which does not fluctuate. Let's take energy momentum Aha. as a solution, because energy momentum is, <clears throat> if you integrate it over space, that's conserved. So it cannot fluctuate if it is integrated. And <clears throat> if you make all the calculations, which are even more awful than in, in the previous case, then you really can find out that <clears throat> Now this noise can be <clears throat> low enough. <clears throat> of course, it's not really free because you have to set up uh, some <clears throat> time scales, some length scales, uh, some scale of uh, um, uh, this <clears throat> incoming wave. Okay, so if you take all these scales and uh, take some special regime of uh, this function f, <clears throat> then you can show that there is some scale separation. And uh, if you, uh, for appropriate function f, and if you take this example, for example, for this free uh, uh, time Gordon field uh, and the energy moment, too, but now you have real clicks. Now you have the, the horse, which is a horse, not something different. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Oh, how can we imply this k in the passive integral form? Like, uh, uh, it's not unitary. Uh, it's not unitary, so you, if you if you we go it, back, uh, it, it it comes here, uh, we can't and it. and it, it, it's it's really uh, very uh, brutal. You just put it put the k here, nothing is done, and it really, k, k instead of a k instead of a. Of course, you in fact you need two types of k. So k which which goes uh, the upper uh, um, contour and the lower. But uh, pardon, where yes. is this uh, uh, incoming wave? You you've been mentioning the plane wave. The uh, plane wave will be somewhere here. So you have to uh, um, like, let, 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 let me show my, my hands. Okay, so here is your measurement. Okay, and here is your incoming wave. Yeah, so incoming is produced uh, somewhere here, and it goes to your measurement plane, yes, and you collect it here. And in, in this way, you uh, you, you, oh, okay. you so separate. It's, it's, the, it's the initial condition. It's the initial condition, but it's because in this picture, there is, you, you can only see the vacuum. So the vacuum starts somewhere here. And now, if you if you want this incoming weight, it's it's here. So this g function is located somewhere here. And the measurement is is uh, simply done some somewhere later. Okay, so we need some separation of scales. That's important. So, yeah, but, but pardon me, where, where is this plane wave in this formula? Uh, okay, so it's also in in A. So in A you can put everything. So you you can put uh, incoming wave. You can that, that, that's the the uh, uh, the nice thing of this whole picture. You can really put everything here. So in A, there is everything. There's cross operator, there's incoming wave, there is interaction. Whatever you want is in A. And now you can really calculate whatever you want. It's it's sometimes it's hard, but all can be calculated. That's why I, I like this whole picture. It's quite old, but uh, but uh, really really useful. It survived also. You know that I'm in condensed matter, so it has been invented in condensed matter. But Schwinger, Schwinger is not for this matter. Uh, it, it quickly found, uh, people found out that, that this uh, closed time paths are useful in, in, I think, all branches of physics. So, so in Matsubara, right? Hmm? What? Matsubara. Matsubara also. Yeah, Matsubara. So there are many founding fathers, <laughs> actually. So there are more. Uh, I think there was also Keldish, and there are a, a, a few more. Uh, they all uh, found out that it's it's really a very good picture and it's a very efficient way to calculate anything you you want uh, uh, when you want uh, also cross operators but cross operators but more much later but everything you just put in this A that's that's the story or in L if you if you want but anyway 
everything is just included in, in, in this integral. And once you, once you have it, uh, uh, um, then you can make some Gaussian integrals. Okay, so uh, so everything can be calculated, and now we can have these kicks. So we have this uh, uh, relation between moments that can be uh, shown. And uh, um, are there any problems? Yes, there are problems because uh, because it's a quadratic function of pi. So there are even more problems with renormalization. Uh, you need to subtract some uh, zero energy, which is like a cosmological constant. So uh, it, it's not very easy, but it's it's possible. So it's renormalizable. Uh, you can um, there are even uh, some problems even with derivatives because uh, you need uh, something like uh, chronological. Product and uh, these derivatives here make even problems with chronological problems. But everything can be finally uh, uh, done. So uh, if you if you can live with renormalization of energy, then uh, you can accept this picture. Uh, there is of course the problem of this function f. So uh, how should we define? Does it follow from something? So if we go back to Uno David um, example, in Uno David you have you had just this fictitious particle. So this function f is a kind of reduction of this fictitious particle. Instead of a fictitious particle, we have to define the Krauss operator, which is defined within the field theory, so we have just the field within fields within the field theory, but we also need some additional function, but this additional function is not a new particle. So what is good in all this picture is that we just have the particle physics. We do not add any new particle. Everything is defined just in this frame box of uh, particle physics. And we can define the measurement and we can have a particle, which is a particle, not a wave. Okay, uh, it's almost all. Uh, just uh, I wanted to say that it's not a complete theory. I still have a problems and things which, which I um, uh, want to do in the future. Uh, uh, maybe with Jarek, I don't know. Uh, in objectiveness, I still don't know how to define, okay, so uh, we, let, let me go back to this function. Okay, so this function must stop at some point. Why it should be like that? Why the function f, which defines the area of the measurement, should uh, be up to some point? Uh, because here there is some ar arbitrariness. I don't like it. I would rather to want to have an objective criterion of complete measurement. So that's an open question, which is not solved by this model. Uh, okay, uh, simplification. Uh, I, 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 I guess most of you uh, will hate cross operators. You always want projections, me too. Uh, uh, because projection is simpler. We, we like simple things. Cross operators is not something simple. Uh, so uh, uh, we need to uh, write uh, a good criterion. So, okay, so we don't like cross operators, but at some stage we need them as some intermediate uh, um, solution. But at some stage you want to go back to projection. So we need to say, okay, so when the projection is a correct picture, when, the, uh, to, when we can approximate the measurement by the projection, which time scale uh, makes it correct. Yeah, so, so that, that, this is the answer that we, we need, where, when we can make the simplification. And the last point, which is my favorite goal. Okay, so let's now go back to Bell tests and rewrite the Bell test, not in the original Bell-like manner. Because Bell was a particle physicist, by the way. Bell, uh, Bell uh, constructed with uh, CTP uh, uh, symmetry. So Bell uh, uh, knows all, uh, knew, knew all about uh, particle physics, almost all, 
But this particular uh, uh, Bell test was not written in a particle uh, physics manner. It was just a play with uh, simple operators uh, with two outcomes or whatever. So now the question is, okay, can we rewrite or write down the, this Bell test just starting from a quantum uh, field framework with fields, with uh, um, Lagrangian path integrals and so on from the very beginning. So from uh, this uh, uh, choosing of settings, the measurements and so on, how to do it correct and, and completely within uh, uh, relativistic uh, uh, field theory. This is something which which remains an open question, and I I'm not sure if there are any catch points. Catch points, as you have seen, uh, there are pro there were problems with measurements. Measurements can have this noise, uh, uh, can maybe will not give you a particle or whatever. So I don't know. Uh, in Belters, we need uh, we need a measurement of two particles at two different points. So that might be a problem. Both of them must, the measurements have to be completed before each other cone. Uh, so that might be a problem. So that's an open question. Uh, and the last thing, uh, sorry for so few formulas, but if you want formulas, let's read my paper now. A lot of them, a lot of them. And you can see, I can only convince you. All those things with which I have uh, said here about uh, um, uh, moments and so on, they are calculated there. But the formulas are so large, so uh, I, I didn't want to, to, to show them here because um, that would be uh, obscuring the, the eye. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan, for a very nice talk. Now, the questions. Nicole. Okay, first, first of a simple observation. If you take special relativity seriously, the problem of time localizability becomes quite much possible because of Lorentz transforms. If hey. you, if, if, even if your system measurement is time localized in one frame, it may become very dislocalized in another one. Yes, 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 yes. I, I agree that if, if we take, but uh, again, uh, that's, uh, yeah, 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 absolutely correct, but that's, that's among uh, these. Uh, uh, axioms, yes. So Whiteman axiom, one of our Whiteman axioms are uh, is this uh, Lorentz invariance. Yeah. Uh, we, we would say that Whiteman axioms is a modern way to formalize relativity theory. And uh, but but uh, uh, once we accept it, then yes, then, then I, I agree. But it's still spaces within the cone, yes, because the cone by invariant. Or you can smear it in time, but you yeah, know, yeah, but it's in the call. I, I guess, I guess, what is really important here is if the, the, the call light comes, like yeah, light comes are if, yeah. if, 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 if it's zero one, you are either within light call or outside, mm -hmm. outside good within bad because then there's a possibility of the call. So it's a uh, it, it's the, the uh, invariant light cone structure that matters. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, the light cone is invariant. So in each frame, the the, the volume or so the, or the set of the light cone is the same. Yes. Okay. You mentioned in the last example where you had the <clears throat> the function k, yes, that you got some troubles in the kernel algorithm. That is, would you? Be able to make it work well, whatever to think. Uh, okay, yeah. so the, 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 the problem is that in uh, this energy momentum, you have the derivatives, and the derivatives are also uh, a, there is a time derivative here. And the time derivative uh, um, uh, can meet this theta function, which orders the, the fields uh, or operators in the chronological uh, product. And you, you need to say, OK, so what, what, what then? Uh, what, what I can just tell you that it can be solved, but it is indeed a problem. Okay, So, so just, just trust me that, that uh, it's a problem, but solvable. Is there any way of systematizing? Because you show like a little, you know, one example, and then you, you create a larger example, which are great for you all. And then finally, the tensor. Is there a way of you can systematize this search for a, 
Yes, so so uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> you can do it in a similar way, I think, like with uh, renormalization. So in the theory of renormalization, you can show that uh, there are some dangerous divergence, uh, di divergences, but uh, if you uh, say subtract them systematically, then nothing uh, bad happens. I'm not absolutely sure, but I'm quite convinced that here uh, it's a similar situation. So this problem with derivative uh, 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 occurs only once and does not uh, say give problems in say higher uh, higher moments. Because here, if you have a to n, you indeed you need higher moments. So so uh, some you, you need some uh, some prediction about higher moments which would need higher chains of operators. And uh, this this problem, if I remember, appears only at the second order. You know, in third and higher orders, it's it's no longer why because uh, the derivative uh, there is only one or here can be the second one. So uh, up to two derivatives. And uh, if uh, the, um, if the uh, energy momentum tensor was constructed with uh, a larger product of fields. Or uncontrolled product of fields, then I would expect there would be problem in higher orders. So it depends on the on the uh, uh, degree of of this uh, polynomial. Uh, you mentioned a couple of times uh, earlier in the talk um, kind of incompatibility of measurements and outcomes as a problem. Like you said, it was a problem with cross operators and projections. Can you comment on why this is a problem and does your thing solve this? Uh, what is the uh, uh, okay, so maybe that, uh, I start from the last thing. My uh, uh, proposal does not solve this problem. Yeah. <laughs> does not solve so. because uh, because uh, the problem of uh, incompatibility is a very old problem. It starts from Heisenberg uncertainty, and uh, I really don't know if anybody has solved this. Even me. Yeah. Uh, so, I would even categorize it as a problem. It's just like, exactly. So why? Okay. <laughs> the feature. The feature. Okay. Yes. I yes. A relevant thing maybe is that this problem occurs even if you have like classical waves, right? You can't localize the wave in this Fourier transform. Uh, right? Yes. It, yes. Yes. It, it's from, from Fourier transform. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Or in, in mechanical, in a much simpler uh, childish picture, you always uh, disturb the system. So. Uh, you cannot expect that if you have a sequence of measurements that you will have always the initial state of the system the same for the next measurement as it was for the previous measurement. Uh, yes, if, yes. If I may continue. So I wanted to ask you, you need two non-commuting measurements per party for the bell test. So that's one measurement. How would you construct the second one, which in operator picture is not commuting with this one? Very good question. And that's why this project is unfinished, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but but what, what, what I could expect that uh, you need uh, two another different functions. Uh, window from. function, another window function. Yes, okay. yes, yes, exactly. Okay, okay. Um, more questions? Tehut? You said uh, we don't like uh, a, a class operator. We like a production operator. Is there any like limit for uh, take uh, taking the class operator to the production operator? You change the parameter. Uh, so um, uh, once again, so the, the, the class. Uh... What, what, uh, uh, if, if you, I mean, I, I imagine if we change the actual, if you actually take a uh, certain parameter limit, mm -hmm. and maybe cloud yeah. operator, maybe approach the uh, projection operator. Well, uh, 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 first of all, uh, projections operators are a subset of cloud operators. And so uh, each projection is also a cloud operator. So that's one, uh, but uh, whether we can uh, make some limit. Uh, so uh, one thing, maybe, maybe, uh, okay, maybe, maybe if we if we just take this, this simple one, uh, Gaussian. Uh, if you uh, take, uh, mm, if you somehow manipulate with this function f, you can um, have something like you say, but uh, in a long time limit, um, a Krauss operator can become a projection. So uh, 
um, it can be cohere your system or whatever. So uh, if you take a time continuous cross family of all operators and extend the this action of cross operators to some very long time, then it essentially makes us the coherence and and uh, can be equivalent to projection. So in, in some sense, yes, yes, in both senses, one with projections is a subfamily, and you are also right that uh, projections can be seen as a limit of cross operators. Okay, now maybe the online audience. Uh, are there any questions from the online audience? Yes. Carol. Yes, yes, Carol, please. Yes, hello. Best regards from Krakow. Here's Karol Rzyczkowski speaking. So as you mentioned, of course, correctly, um, projection, can, can you hear me? Projection yes, yes. operators are special kind of Klaus operators. So from your perspective, which Klaus operators, which are, let's say, most distant, most not uh, close to projection operators are interesting from your perspective? Uh, okay, so uh, if we want to uh, uh, be far from projection, so I think the the, the most uh, promising, uh, the, the best answer is uh, something which I call a weak measure. So if we if this function f is very small, uh, then the measurement uh, essentially uh, does not. Uh, so the cross operator does not measure uh, anything. Yes, it measures nothing because if f is zero. Then the cross operator uh, does not uh, has only a, so it measures a. It gives it will give you some uh, mm, uh, some distribution Gaussian distribution, but it does not uh, get any information about the system. So uh, it's weak because it does not uh, uh, changes the system. Uh, on the contrary, projection makes this collapse. So it's a strong measurement which. Uh, uh, Collapses the whole state to a state which is dictated by projection, uh, and if you take a Krauss operator which is very weak, so a very small function f, then we can have this opposite, so very weak measurement. And uh, taking this f, I think essentially you can uh, go uh, between uh, a weak measurement or no measurement at all if f is zero. And if F is very large, then you have a strong measurement, which can be seen as a projection. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, any more questions? If not the case, let's take Adam again. 